clock in, clock in. Black guy to just walked in. I don't need nobody. Only fuck with niggas from around my way. Fuck how you feel about it. I don't know who's stepping for my session, but they still trying to block it. Had to throw the hate up on my necklace. Bitch, I'm trying to stop it, bitch. I don't even wash my clothes. I ain't never folded. Had to wipe a nigga nose. Team Black got his stand up, man. Yo. All right, y'all, we back with another video, man. Lil Dirt, he didn't know he was being filmed, y'all. Make sure y'all leave a like. Y'all let me know how y'all feel and what y'all want to see next in the comment section below. Dirk was really out here moving like a mafia boss, forcing the feds to use tactics that have been used to bring down mafia families. Authorities have Dirk on tape admitting to murders, and it's not only the murder of Quando Rondo's cousin. From having his brother's killers murk to ordering the death of an informant's baby mama, Dirk was out here flying his killers in private planes. Vaughn is dead, right? Okay, well, how the f is these paying for a jet? This is going to be one wild ride. That boy is steady OTF telling. snitch sells out Lil Dirk. If there's one thing that Lil Durk has made clear in his past interviews, it's that he hates snitches. I hate all rats. If you if you ever told, you ever tell, you, I hate you. Like with a passion. I really hate rats with real passions. Like I hate you bad. I'm looking to the camera. I hate rat. What's crazy is that Dirk might be in cuffs because one of his mans told on him. According to court documents, a dude named OTF Jam, who is a trusted member of the crew. Nah, I don't know why the hell y'all trust Jam for. Look at his head. Just look at Jam's head. He look like he think about too much in the front of his head. Like, well, somebody hit your ass, boy. I'm talking about they hit that boy Jam. But y'all, don't be surprised if Jam really ain't telling for real, y'all. Don't don't remember I told y'all that. Crucial role in the investigation that brought down Lil Durk. It turns out that this dude had been released from prison in 2022 after serving 12 years for attempted murder. His head ain't look that big right now. Who had been cooperating with authorities for years? The craziest part about all this is that he wore a wire while around Lil Durk and other OTF gang members, which provided intel to the feds. They still talking about this no wire. Saw coming, not even Durkio. According to the indictment, Jam's recordings and the information he provided were key in linking Dirk to the now infamous murder for hire plot that almost took out Quando Rondo. If you understand OTF Jam's relationship with Dirk, then his involvement in ratting out the OTF boss will shock you and his secret recordings, which have formed the backbone of the case against Dirk, will start to look like the worst case of backstabbing in hip hop history. Jam, a longtime member of OTF, was considered a brother by Lil Dirk. During Jam's 12 year incarceration for attempted murder, Dirk stood by him, providing financial support and ensuring that Jam's needs were met. This included covering legal fees, purchasing a house and car, and gifting him more than $50,000 in cash. Jeff for you to tell. Crazy work, I know. That boy paid you to tell. Bro made sure he made a way for me to be straight like but if this wasn't enough, Dirk also took care of OTF Jam, even while he was in jail. So what would make someone turn on their homie without any remorse? Yeah, like, Dirk come through with the homie, that's sure. That's I don't give a f nobody say, like, sure. I know I'm a real witness. Like, a lot of niggas can't say anything. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm in life my whole time in jail, I was straight. It turns out Dirk may have been involved in the death of his baby mama. According to reports, Lil Dirk found out that Jam had been wearing a wire all along. Determined to get his revenge, Dirk knew that getting an FBI informant murked could bring him unwanted attention from the feds, so he went after his child's mother, Octavia. What? Hedden. And on a seemingly ordinary day in the West Pullman neighborhood of Chicago, the life of a beloved postal worker, Octavia Redmond, was tragically cut short on the 19th of July, 2024. At approximately noon, Octavia was in front of a Chicago home preparing to deliver mail when a stolen SUV pulled up nearby. The vehicle, later identified as the getaway car, was driven by a 15-year-old suspect. The suspect exited the SUV and approached Octavia with a chilling intent. Without warning, he shot her multiple times at close range, leaving her critically injured on the ground. The oh, hell no. Fled the scene in the stolen SUV. The 48-year-old woman was taken to Christ Hospital in critical condition, where she was later pronounced dead at the hospital. In the immediate aftermath of the shooting, the Chicago Police Department launched an intensive investigation to track down the suspect. The U.S. Postal Inspection Service also became involved, offering a substantial reward for information leading to the arrest and conviction of those responsible. They took to their... Oh, that's crazy. 
Prison where he announced a quarter of a million prize for information leading to the arrest and conviction of the suspect responsible for the homicide. As the investigation unfolded, authorities utilized footage from police and private cameras to trace the suspect's movements before and after the shooting. The stolen SUV was identified, and an anonymous tip provided crucial information that helped identify the suspect. Months passed as investigators worked tirelessly to bring the perpetrator to justice. The breakthrough came when the suspect was located in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, and arrested on a murder warrant. Despite Dirk's loyalty to his homie, Jam decided to become what the Chicago rapper hates the most, a rat. But having his baby's mother killed didn't solve anything. The damage was already done. So what exactly did OTF Jam reveal to the cops that might see Dirk get the death penalty? Well, OTF Jam's revelations to the cops started with the tragic events of November 6, 2020. That night, King Von, Dirk Tokyo's best friend, was killed outside an Atlanta nightclub. The altercation began as a physical fight between Vaughn and Quando Rondo, escalating into gunfire when a member of Rondo's entourage allegedly shot Vaughn multiple times, resulting in his death. CCTV footage showed Vaughn approaching fellow rapper Quando Rondo and punching him. To the ground, Vaughn's guys joined in and started beating the brakes off Quando as he tried in vain to get away from his attackers. As the assault went on, one of Quando's homeboys, who was later identified as Lil Tim, appeared from behind their vehicle with a gun in hand and started letting off shots as everyone ran away. Vaughn was hit on his torso. He would later die from his gunshot wounds while in hospital during surgery. For Lil Dirk, the death of his friend was not only a personal tragedy, but also a catalyst for further animosity towards Quando Rondo. Rumors began to circulate that Dirk had placed a bounty on Rondo's head, fueling speculation and fear within the industry. Court documents show that OTF Jam told cops that after Vaughn's death, Dirk used coded language to tell OTF members that he would pay a bounty to anyone who would take part in killing Quando Rondo. Dirk's cousin, DeAndre Wilson, also told OTF members that anyone who took part in the murder would be rewarded with lucrative music opportunities with OTF, which was also a music label. In August 2022, Lil Dirk's associates allegedly learned that Quando Rondo was staying at a hotel in Los Angeles and plans to murk Quando were set in motion. Dirk, I don't know if you know, brother, but like, bro, they talking extra saucy, famo. Like, they talking extra spicy. Like, this gotta be the spiciest video I seen in a minute, but they talking reckless, bro. Ski. Bro, let me find out, bro. Like, y'all boy got that old boy, baby mama. His baby mama. Cause y'all found out he was wearing a wire. So, bro, like, what's T, fam? Bro, really had a wire on, bro? Like dead ass, a cord under his shirt. Why that sounds so 1999 to me? That don't sound like the 21st century. I mean, you could have had your iPhone on record. Bro, you had a wire on, bro. It ain't sitting well with me, fam. I don't get it. Associates, DeAndre Wilson, Keith Jones, David Lindsay, and Asa Houston traveled from Chicago to San Diego and then driven to Los Angeles, allegedly using funds provided by Dirk himself. The group was determined to carry out their mission with precision and stealth avoiding any direct links to Dirk by following his alleged instructions to avoid booking flights under names associated with him. The feds revealed that they obtained information from Dirk's iCloud, where he warned them not to book anything in his name. However, despite the warning, they still went ahead. Girl, you know how I feel about that warning? That's just what any homeboy would say when I know my partner's dumb. When I know my partner's stupid, it don't necessarily mean I'm telling my partners to go do some stupid shit, but it's just like, I know you stupid, fam. I grew up around you. You just been dumb as hell your whole life. And I know there's a possibility you may do some dumb shit. So just in case you do some dumb shit, do not put my name nowhere near connected to anything you finna do, famo. That just sound like a homeboy being a homeboy. Uh, let me know if I'm tripping. Using a credit card linked to Lil Durk and OTF. Upon their arrival, and they the still OTF did it anyway. Crazy Grant, word. A top associate who had flown to Los Angeles on a private jet. Grant played a crucial role in facilitating the operation, securing hotel accommodations for the group, purchasing ski masks, and obtaining two luxury sedans to be used in the ambush. According to court records, Grant also provided Jones, Lindsay, and an unidentified third member with firearms, including one that had been converted into a machine gun, further escalating the potential for violence. As the day unfolded, the group allegedly began tracking Quando Rondo and his associate Robinson as they traveled around Los Angeles in a Cadillac Escalade. Their journey took them to various locations, including a marijuana dispensary and a clothing store in West Hollywood. The tension was palpable as the suspects followed their targets, waiting for the opportunity. What does palpable mean? The climax oh, no, that of the day's event. 
events occurred at a gas station across from the Beverly Center, a bustling area in the heart of Los Angeles. Here, Asa Houston allegedly parked his car strategically behind the station, setting the stage for the ambush. As Quando Rondo and Robinson stopped at the gas station, Jones, Lindsay, and the third unidentified man reportedly exited their vehicle, armed and ready to execute their plan. The suspects opened fire, unleashing a hail of bullets in an attempt to kill Rondo. Tragically, Lul Pab, Quando's cousin, who was standing outside the Escalade, was struck and killed in the gun. Famo, I think you posted the wrong person. I don't think that's him. I don't think that's him, fam. Yeah, bro, I think you posted the wrong person. Is that him, y'all? That don't look like, bro. Pob, Quando's cousin, who was standing outside the Escalade, was struck and killed in the gunfire, while Rondo miraculously escaped unharmed. The scene was one of chaos and terror as bystanders scrambled for safety and the suspects fled the scene. Afterwards, the suspects regrouped at an In-N-Out hamburger stand, where they allegedly discussed payment with Kayon Grant. The group then made their way back to Chicago, flying from San Diego, as authorities began piecing together the details of the brazen attack. Word on the streets is that these two murders aren't the only ones that Dirk has paid for. From his brother's killer to an op who disrespected Vaughn's mural, Dirk has been moving reckless for a while murders Lil Dirk has paid for. The earliest murder for hire plot that Dirk has been caught up in involves the murder of his brother. The story starts with the death of Lil Dirk's brother, D. Thang, on June 7, 2021. On a Sunday morning outside a strip club in South Suburban Harvey, shots were fired and D. Thang was shot in the head. He was pronounced dead at the scene. Word on the street was that a dude named Stefan Mack was responsible for D. Thang's death. So Lil Dirk put a bounty on his head. And on oh, January shit. 7, 2022, Mack was gunned down at the Youth Peace Center of Roseland, located at 400 and 20 West 111th Street in Chicago. Soon, two men, Anthony Montgomery Wilson and Preston Powell, were indicted with murder for hire. The events leading up to Mac's murder were meticulously planned. Montgomery Wilson and Powell, along with other unidentified accomplices, allegedly conspired to execute Mac in exchange for money. The plot involved the use of a cell phone and a 2014 Chrysler 300, which were deemed facilities of interstate commerce by prosecutors. As Mac exited the Youth Peace Center, gunmen emerged from a vehicle and opened fire, leaving him fatally wounded. A security guard was also injured in the attack but survived. The indictment, initially kept under seal, was made public, revealing the gravity of the accusations against the two men. Montgomery Wilson and Powell were charged with conspiracy to use an interstate facility in the commission of a murder for hire. Additionally, Montgomery Wilson faced an individual murder for hire count and a gun charge. As the legal proceedings unfolded, Montgomery Wilson found himself in custody, facing the full weight of the charges against him. During his arraignment, Montgomery Wilson pleaded not guilty, setting the stage for a potentially lengthy and contentious trial. His defense team is expected to challenge the evidence presented by the prosecution, which includes photos from the U.S. Attorney's Office allegedly showing him pursuing the victim with a firearm. Meanwhile, Preston Powell remains a fugitive, with law enforcement agencies actively seeking his arrest. The most high-profile murder that Dirk is alleged to have paid for is that of FBG Duck. When Duck's killers were arrested back in 2021, word got out that Vaughn had put a 100k bounty on his head. Turns out there was a rat in O-Block working with the feds, who revealed that the one who paid for the hit rewarded the killers with custom-made O-Block chains. A video surfaced on YouTube of King Von giving O-Block members custom-made chains. But according to sources in Chicago, it was actually Dirk who put the hit on Duck and paid the killers. I don't think Von paid them guys. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to tell the world. To know who actually paid the old man, bro, I gotta go Duck. see that video. FBG Butter revealed that you have to look at the suspects. Hey, arrested. Butter be doing Turns so. Turns out Muwap and C Murder weren't arrested in O Block. Everybody arrest video coming out from when they got arrested for this Duck case. Yeah. They ain't show Muwap shit. Yeah. Or C Murder. Sorry. Copy out some Muwap and C Murder go to jail on camera yet? Because everybody else involved in that case arrest footage is on camera. It turns out that they were arrested at a private hangar, which is crazy because no regular O Block gang member could afford to charter a private plane. Them boys got snatched at the airport on a private hangar. What's interesting is that at the time of their arrest, Vaughn was already dead. That would leave one person with that kind of money to fly out Muwapo and see murder on a private jet, Lil Dirk. Vaughn is dead, right? Okay, well. How the f is these paying for a jet? Dirk is also suspected of ordering the death of one of Duck's closest homies, FBG Cash, for disrespecting Vaughn's mural. When King Vaughn was killed, 
Cash decided to take a photo next to the mural showing his middle finger. However, instead of having kind words for the deceased rapper, he captioned the post saying, whole world witnessed yo main sniper get his shit splack. This stunt did not go down well with Vaughn's guys, and especially with Vaughn's best friend, Lil Durk. Lil Durk decided to stick up for Vaughn by Damn. warning Cash in his song Computer Murderers, where he raps sneaking pics by Vaughn Mural like Lil Bro won't come out and spin. Seemingly enjoying the attention, Cash would use Durk's beat on Computer Murderers and continue dissing King Vaughn singing, Vaughn got his ass clapped. You had us thinking he was stretched. Cash even started trolling his ops in interviews. In one interview, he was asked about his infamous stunt at King Vaughn's mural. He responded by saying that Lil Durk had told him to do it. Then I think at some point you take the picture in front of O'Block, in yeah. front of the King Vaughn mural. Mm -hmm. So what, what was going on with all that? Durk told me to do that. Dirk told you to do that. Yeah. Okay. It was only a matter of time before his ops would catch up with him, and a warning from Dirk on social media gave a clue as to what would happen next. Lil Dirk had taken to Instagram to warn him, don't diss thang if you be lingering and chasing who's won't end well, that's marched, the Instagram story read. And according to some of his friends, he was set up by a female. And the dad, like five o'clock that morning, you was loose as hell, trying to ride around with in a rack. Come on, bro, ain't no doing that, good. You know better, like, these Set you up. On the 9th of June, 2022, Cash was picked up by a female friend and headed for a nightclub. After the club, the rapper took her to a friend's house to sleep with her. At around 5 in the morning, Cash drove the car home with the girl in the back seat. According to her, she was tired and wanted to sleep. A few minutes later, Cash stopped at the stop sign on the 1600 block of West 81st when a car cut them off. Three men jumped out and opened fire. Cash exited the vehicle as he shot back. However, he was soon overpowered. Cash was later taken to Christ Hospital in Oak Lawn, where he succumbed to his injuries. According to reports, a few weeks before the tragic incident that claimed his life, FBG Cash was involved in a shooting in which even he suspected that the female he was with had set him up. Luckily, only his arm was grazed by a bullet and he lived to tell the tale. When I went to look, I was like, damn, like the bullet had ripped all my jacket. Like, I'm like, I'm shot. That morning, Cash had just left the studio and gone to the woman's house. At around 4.20 in the morning, a guy started blowing up her phone. According to Cash, it was the girl's boyfriend. The woman then told Cash that her boyfriend had the house keys, meaning he could show up at any moment. So the duo decided to leave the house. They jumped into the woman's car and drove off with Cash in the passenger seat. The rapper did one thing that saved his life that night. He reclined his seat and lay on his back while on his phone. On the way home, they stopped at a red light as a vehicle pulled behind them. According to Cash, the woman told him that it was a cop. The rapper peeped but couldn't see clearly, so he went back to his phone. Suddenly, the rear windshield was broken by a hail of bullets. Luckily, he was not in the line of fire. Immediately, the woman sped off before anyone could get shot. People around Cash warned him about being around the woman as she was an Instagram model and they had only gone out three times before the incident. According to them, she may have set up the rapper. I'd be shooting at you at three, four o'clock in the morning. And who would know where I was at? Exactly. Like, fuck, I wasn't, no, like, you, know her car. you can't see in my car and then fucking, it's not like I was sitting straight up in her car and then like if he if she did set me up like she did it with the wrong people because they didn't kill Cho. While Dirk has clearly been implicated in several murder for hire plots, there are multiple rappers who've been caught up. <laughs> he in said they done that killed her too. Including one of Dirk's industry <laughs> best friends, King Von rappers who paid for murder. First on the list is one of Dirk's best friends in the industry, Young Thug. In May 2022, Fulton County District Attorney Fonny Willis unveiled a shocking 56-count indictment, accusing Young Thug and 27 other alleged members of YSL of running a violent Atlanta street gang. According to the prosecution, YSL was not just a record label, but a dangerous criminal enterprise known as Young Slime Life affiliated with the National Bloods Gang. The indictment detailed a decade-long reign of terror centered around the Cleveland Avenue area of Atlanta. Prosecutors alleged that YSL members were responsible for a wide range of criminal activities, including murder, assault, robbery, theft, illegal gun possession, and drug sales. At the heart of the indictment was the claim that Young Thug was the clear leader of the organization. One of the most shocking allegations in the indictment centered around the 2015 killing of Donovan Thomas Jr., commonly known as Big Nut, a rival gang member. Prosecutors claimed that Young Thug had rented the car used in the murder, while five other YSL members yeah, were thug, directly charged home, with nah. the killing. As the trial progresses, Crazy the rap way. world is eager to see whether Big Nut's murder will be pinned on Thug. But Thug isn't the only one of Dirk's rapper friends to have their ops murk because it seems like Young and Ace also did. Ace was friends with both Lil Dirk and Quando Rondo before the beef started, and it turns out he may have planned and financed the murder of his fiercest rival, Julio Fulio. According to Fulio's mom, her son's death was a paid hit. Do you think it was a paid hit? I do. 
Ace seemed to confirm that it was a paid hit during an appearance on a YouTube show where he was asked what he had last invested money in. What's the last thing you invested in? And while Lil Durk rewarded his gang members with money and lucrative music deals for carrying out hits, this next rapper was also accused of rewarding his associates with expensive dinners. This is none other than New York drill rapper, Chef G Chef G's gang, which had extended Catching a body for some Brooklyn food is Manhattan, crazy work. And even across state lines to New Jersey, was accused of ordering, orchestrating, and executing acts of chaos that left the community in its wake trembling. Brooklyn's district attorney, Eric Gonzalez, revealed that the rapper had used his financial gains to help facilitate further gang activity, encouraging members to partake in violent crimes. One such act of violence, a mass shooting in Brooklyn, stood out for its sheer audacity and brutality. The suspects had reportedly pulled up in a vehicle and unleashed a hail of bullets on members of a rival gang. The chaos that ensued saw one person killed and five others injured as bystanders fled the scene in terror. The aftermath of the shooting saw Chef G allegedly rewarding the shooters with a lavish steak dinner at a Manhattan restaurant. The last rapper once had beef with Dirk and Vaughn and almost had one of their friends, Chief Keith, murdered. The tension Them boys between the two catching bodies obvious, for steak. It's crazy. Jabs and threats through social boys is dogs for real. As the rivalry intensified, Takashi 6 ix association with Kuda B, a fellow rapper and member of his inner circle, became increasingly significant. Kuda B, whose real name is Kintea McKenzie, was known for his loyalty to 6 9 and his willingness to support him in various endeavors. This relationship would soon play a crucial role in the events that unfolded. The animosity between 6 9 and Chief Keef reached a boiling point in the months leading up to the shooting. In a series of online exchanges, 6 9 taunted Chief Keef associates. In the midst of this escalating feud, a video surfaced in November 2018 that would later become a key piece of evidence. The video, released by TMZ, showed Takashi 6 9 on FaceTime with Tato, Chief Keef's cousin. During the call, 6 9 inquired about Tato's whereabouts and whether he would be with Chief Keef during his visit to New York City. In a shocking revelation, 6 9 claimed to have a 30-pack, referring to a $30,000 bounty, out on Chief Keef. The stage was set for a dramatic confrontation, and on June 2, 2018, the tension erupted into violence. As Chief Keefe made his way back to the Times Square W Hotel in the early morning hours, shots were fired in his direction. Miraculously, Chief Keefe emerged unharmed, but the incident sent shockwaves through the music industry and beyond. The investigation into the shooting quickly gained momentum, with authorities piecing together the events leading up to that fateful night. Kuda B, Takashi 6 9s associate, soon found himself at the center of the investigation. His involvement in the plot to target Chief Keefe would later lead to his guilty plea, marking a significant turning point in the unfolding drama. As Durkio sits in his cell waiting for his trial, the rap world can only wait and see whether all the murder-for-hire cases against him are true or cap. Okay, now, catching a body for a steak dinner is top-tier crash out activity. I'm talking about top-tier. You know, lost your damn mind, boy. <laughs>